the second league of the day. I actually played um, Blue Red Arclight earlier in, or like just on the last league, which you can find on the YouTube channel somewhere in this modern playlist. Um, you can also just search for recent uploads and you can probably easily find that on my channel. Uh, YouTube has it set up. They're really smart and thin at developing websites. But uh, this is kind of, I mean, this is pretty close to the same deck. Like, there's no, obviously, cards that aren't blue-red in this deck, but there is a Sacred Foundry for Stony Silences in the sideboard. So, like, that is a differentiating factor, so I do look at this as Chess Guy. Um, Phoenix, this is a list that has kind of been going around online. Ross Merriman's article today was kind of talking about, uh, he, like, referenced a list like this, if there's, like, a bunch of KCI in your in your metagame, playing, like, the, the White Splash for the Stony Silences, but... I think that in the open this weekend, KCI is very likely to be a very, very popular deck. So I think that the Stony Silences could be really good. And it looks pretty, it looks on the surface to be pretty free to splash. So let's go ahead and dive in. Um, uh, I'm probably going to be a little more brief with this deck breakdown since I literally just did it earlier today. It's basically the same deck. I'm going to be a little more focused on highlighting the differences between this deck and the previous one we played. So let me get all of that and last but not least all of this okay so what we got the land base didn't change too much we still have uh i think we are up a fetch we have seven fetches and we're down we're down an island so we have seven instead of six which is what ross's list in his article today was posted still have the four spire bluff canal uh we now have a sacred foundry and we have two mountains two islands only two steam vents versus three and we have the sacred foundry now um which is weird that we like cut a steam vents and I think a basic island for a fetch. The fetch is fine, but like a red source for like the blue source doesn't make a ton of sense. But I guess we do have Bethlehem Rubbish in our deck, so maybe it makes a little bit more sense. Um, we're still on the. I guess we're not on the 12 cantrips. We have four opt, four Serum Visions, only three Thought Scours, which is fine. After playing a Thought Scour in the last league, I wasn't a huge fan of it. The card felt pretty medium. Um, gut Shot. We're up to three, where we only had two last last league, like Ross's article only had two, and he had two uh, mutagenic growths, which you can see are absent from this list. Uh, still have four faithless looting, the two lightning axes, and the four lightning bolts. Um, the four metamorphoses as the to finish out the free spells, only have seven versus eight total free spells versus the last list, and we now have 14 creatures, so we have the four, 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 which are to be expected, and we have two Bedlam Revelers, which are kind of in the spot in the, of the Crackling Drakes from the previous list, but uh, Ross has actually cut those, and I guess he was he was still on two less creatures because he was only on two Swiss Spheres back when he was playing Crackling Drake, so Bedlam Revelers is an interesting card. I don't know how it's going to work out in this deck, to be honest. Like, if you've seen my other videos where I toyed around with Arclight and Legacy, uh, Bedlam Reveler kind of felt awkward in a deck full of cantrips, because all of your cards draw a card, so getting your hand empty to where you're just getting the full value out of your Bedlam Reveler felt pretty challenging to do. Also, Ross played Crackling Drake as a way to get around uh, Graveyard Hate. Like, it's a good beater that, like, it gets around Graveyard Hate. Um, and Bedlam Reveler doesn't actually do that. Like, I don't even think we have eight sources to cast this. I guess if we have Spiral of Canals, we do. But, like, it, um... Like, it's just, like, doesn't get around Graveyard Hate. So we're still going to have to board it out a lot in a lot of situations where cards like Rest in Peace are coming in. Like, it's a card that's actually, like, dependent on the Graveyard. So I'm interested to see how it plays out. D d obviously, a Treasure Cruise on Legs has the potential to be very powerful, but um, it remains to be seen if the card is going to, like, fit into this game, this deck's game plan as well as it does in the other decks it's played in. Um, ooh, Careful Study would be good in this deck. Correct, Artificial. Okay, correct. If two drops are... We could play... Oh, yeah, we could play Chart and Discovery Dispersal. Yeah, kind of like how, um, what's it called, the Drake decks in Standard do. And uh, I think Grishelbrand in Modern has picked up Discovery Dispersal, so like that would work as well. Um, so, yeah, moving on the sideboard, uh, the Counterspell Suite in this version just has a Disdainful Stroke over the Dispel, which is probably fine. Like That looks pretty marginal to me. A little more prepared for maybe like Titan Shift and... Um, What's it called? KCI than like controlled X. Thank you very much, um, Joe Whistle, for the follow. I really appreciate it the best. Um, but it's yeah, like it's just like it's just for different matchups, but still lets you kind of tailor to a good um, counter spell suite. Um, post sideboard, yeah. So the three surgicals still fine, like as a free spell in the deck, very very powerful. Um, 
like still probably where you want to be no matter what version of list you're playing. Um, nothing really super different to talk about there. Uh, there's three stony silences means I think that we probably don't need as much artifact hate as we have. It's weird to me that this has three abrades and three stony silences and two ceremonies rejections. This looks like somebody with a KCI really hurt them when they were young because this is like a little ridiculous. But hey, you know what? This It's nice that this kind of splashes into um, good removal against like uh, the creature decks. Like once again, we saw like Aether Vial is pretty good at mitigating thing in the ice. And so like being able to pick off the Aether Vials in those matchups is pretty nice. And so it does, it just feels like the creature decks like are were designed to like slaughter those even harder. And like, we also have the anger, you know what I'm saying? So we feel a little weaker to the specifically like Amulet Titan and Titan Shift as big mana, which I suppose we have Disdainful Stroke for like versus Dispel. So which like tailored to swing that way because there's no Alpine Moon in this list. But this card is good against Tron. Like, it's actually very good against Tron, especially on the play. So it makes sense to me, like, that Alpine Moon maybe isn't as important because we're a little better against Tron anyway. The Tannic Graces are going to get gunned down. And, um, yeah, like, we have, we have Braids versus the other artifact matchups. Yeah, I, I don't know. I think this, this sideboard looks a little more um, focused. Like, having three three ofs in your sideboard looks pretty... I don't know. It looks like you aren't really sure what's supposed to be in your sideboard and you're just like planning on like playing enough hateful cards that like decks like KCI just stop moving. Um, I don't know. Maybe we'll get to play against KCI and really get to see if that's the case, but I'm not even sure that like all what, what is this like 13, 14 cards? Maybe we just don't bring in another braid. I don't know. All these cards we would bring in against KCI is even going to make the matchup good. We just bring in the whole kitchen sink, but either way, I don't know. Maybe we'll play against it. Maybe we'll get to see. We got to play against affinity in the last league and like we clearly didn't need artifact hate for that deck. Um, the thing in the ice is plenty good enough as it is. So let's get started. Thank you. If you're coming from YouTube, I shouldn't have used text there. Oops. If you're coming from YouTube, thank you very much. I appreciate you supporting my content. And if you're still here on Twitch, thank you for spending your Wednesday night with me. I really appreciate it. Did you play Careful Study and Legacy? I don't think so. You might need to look at it again. I did not play Careful Study and Legacy. Yeah, you, you might be right that it might be that I might should look at that. I didn't have that many things I wanted to discard. I think I would want a couple more cards I actually wanted to discard in Legacy. Instead, I went like a Thought Scour route. But if I'm doing like a Graveyard Matters strategy in Legacy, I think that we, yeah, we just need to make some changes to the deck. And like, I think we would need to be a little bit more of a Graveyard deck, which makes it harder to switch gears. We'll see. I'm by no means done with that Legacy project. I just don't really have time to look at it anymore for the for the time being. But I'll return to it eventually. Yeah, I think this hand is really medium, but I think on the draw it's fine. Like it's got a bolt, pretty good against the creature decks. We got a thing in the ice. We have like we have threats. We have spells to cast. Like this Arclight Phoenix is awkward, but if we draw Faithless Looting, we feel really smart. And then this is like always like this deck always just wants to Faith Faithless Looting when there's an Arclight Phoenix in hand. Even more so when there's thing in the ice. But what's up? Have we claimed the trophy yet? We did not claim the trophy. We went uh, three and two in the last league. Um, Jazba MTG, but a lot of it was to my own mistakes. Like I don't know how much of it you watched, but like I made a lot of mistakes. And I think I think we definitely could have four one. I think it was within the realms of possibility, like very like reasonable possibility for us to five would Had I like made a couple less mistakes, like I don't think it's due to the decks power level which is an important distinction given that i am struggling with deck like deck decision for this weekend hopefully this is just gonna burn because burn is just like a rancid matchup interesting maybe it's mardu pyromancer with no one drop i don't really know but i think it's important to differentiate when like i make misplays versus the decks just didn't feel powerful enough because if i think it was just the deck then i should shouldn't waste time with this deck anymore but if it's like me making mistakes i just need to play more with the deck so it, like it literally is the difference between playing more and playing less right um this could be a one mana hollow one that'd be pretty good it is a one mana hollow one um can't bring the phoenix back all of your stuff sounding sick fetch go grab this well we're playing against this last league actually i don't know if this is the same person uh-oh but um, we played against this deck last league, and it didn't actually feel that bad. Like, Thing in the Ice felt pretty ridiculous. It was pretty hard for them to kill. And this is the one matchup where Mutagenic was really, really good. Like, we literally won both games against this deck because of Mutagenic. They just went to double bolt this, and, like, we just flipped it and, like, 
flew him out. Um, we're going to play around Bolt, take 8. I don't think the 2 damage is particularly, like, matters. I just don't think it matters that much. There's a Flame Blade Adept, which we want to pick off with this Bolt. Faith is sitting best draw still. Um, hmm. Let's see. I think I'm going to go into blue-red with this. Well, actually, I think I might go into red-red. So we have two red spells we know we want to cast. If there's a blue spell we want to cast, there's a steam that's right here to cast it. So, yeah. I'm going to go to red-red. Plus, if I, if I go, like, double bolt this or whatever I would need to do, like, we get to, um... Why are they in the tank? If we... I mean, we're probably, like, bolt bolting or whatever. Especially because they played out three lands, so playing the fourth isn't great. But, like... I kind of just don't also want to bolt. If we draw a Faithless Looting, though. Hmm. I guess we have the, the Steam Vents, so I'm actually just going to blow into red. Okay. So we can just Lightning Bolt here, I think, and pass. <clears throat> I guess I shouldn't have played the land. I wanted to use my mana, like, efficiently. But now, like, I look a little bit dumb. Need to draw, like, literally any spell to flip this. Which means big game. Probably means I'm bolting the Flame Wake Phoenix after combat. Just to, like, pick this up, potentially. And, like, have them not have enough mana to, like, bring this back. Probably flashing back Faithless Looting here. Yeah, I mean, this is pretty, pretty reasonable. Play Boggles and not playing Boggles, Dota. That's just not, I mean, I would say that's just not happening. I have played it in the past. I played it at... Actually, I played it at Invitational, too. Played it in Open and Invitational. I should just scapeshift this weekend since gifts I've given. Also, who are you teaming with? I'm teaming with Dylan Hand and uh, Chad Harney. Two incredible Magic players that are much better at Magic than I am. Um, okay. Uh, I don't think I'm still blocking. They could still go Land Bolt, and I'm not okay with that. So I'm actually just going to not block, and then I'm going to bolt this Phoenix. Like, it also makes sense because they would want to, like, like, if I do some shenanigans, they want to get their blood gas back. So it makes sense they're holding a land. I think it's very within the realms of possibility that they're holding land bolt here. Doing this to conserve life total since I'm not blocking, and obviously remove a counter if we can pick all this stuff up, then we're fine. Notably, they discarded two Delve Threats. Yeah, here you go. There's the land. Like, we still don't know if they have a lightning bolt in hand or not. Serum visions. Let's see if they have the push. It does not appear that they do. I am at five, which means that blood gas has haste. Which is pretty unfortunate. Hey, thank you. What's up, OJ? How goes it? I missed you at work today. You were not there. Everybody say hi to OJ. He's a, uh, he's a friend and colleague of mine. Oh, no. So this spear blocks well. So like, hmm. I want to attack for seven, obviously, but they could just put all the stuff and play and attack me for a board, put me to one, and like I'm nowhere close to killing them. So I think I have to leave this opt. I'm gonna have to leave spear too. I definitely have to leave the opt. I don't know how good this spear is gonna be. So make sure you put it on bottom. Leave this on top, play a tap land. There's one, two, three, four spells in the yard, so we're okay. We're not in great shape, but we're in okay shape. Like, it is still kind of awkward for them to put all their stuff in play. And, like, we're not going to get hit this turn, I don't think, which is important. And they're not going to be able to double bolt our Awoken Horror at any point. It's just bigger than everything they got going on. What's going up? Oh, gosh, not work. <laughs> no, not work. Yeah, I appreciate I appreciate your support. If you do have a magic deck list you want me to play, submit me a uh, submit me a deck list. I'll play something for you. By the way, artificial is Chris. I think you've met Chris from the Overwatch lunches. I don't know how long it's been since you guys have seen each other, but that is Christopher Cusera. Plays Overwatch with us as well. Oof. 
Yo. Double hollow one? What? Oh, no kidding. They get back Phoenix? That's awkward. They have the third Gurmag Angler, which is interesting. It's weird that, like, trading with this is not a real plan. That's really odd to me. So, like, it's very likely that we're just going to die to this Phoenix now. One, two, three, four. Um, up this mana neutral if our plan is to actually... What is our plan? We can, like, block. Does that get us closer to Reveler? It does. Yeah, we can, like, play Phoenix and block, but, like, we're in Bolt range now. I don't think this game's getting better for us. Definitely not looking for that. Faith is looting. You're on time, buddy. Alright, what do we got? We need some Phoenixes. We need them now! I think this probably has to... Whoa! Uh... Well, so we need to draw a gut shot or whatever off of a Bellum Reveler? One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, all right. Yep, let's do it. We're not going to play land because it's a tap land. Okay, let's see what we got. We have the opportunity to hit pretty hot here. Land spell. Dang it. All right, well, I don't think they have a removal spell, so... Dude, this would have been the perfect spell to cast too. That's pretty. That's pretty rough. It's okay though. We we have a, we have a powerful next turn. If we can dodge lightning bolt, which I don't, I've been playing on lightning bolt this whole time. I don't think we're actually going to dodge it. I think we're just going to get bolted and die. But I think that we were like in pretty good spot. Yeah, we're just dead. No, I think we're pretty likely to actually stay alive there. Like any free spell or any land plus like this or whatever. Like just kill that. Ugh, would have been so good. So, so good. One of braids. This deck feels like a blue hollow one. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I guess. We have our own phoenixes. They have their phoenixes. So I guess that uh, that comparison works, right? All right. Gut shots are bad. Boop. Ley lines are rough for us. And they've seen Reveler now. So I think we're supposed to cut at least one Reveler. You like bring in surgical. Don't love Swiss beer in this matchup. I don't know why we're leaving so many in. Gotta look at one of those. It is like actively good against uh, ley lines, but I think I want to do something like this. Maybe anger's okay. I don't know. He didn't bring it in. He being Ross Merriam did not bring it in. Is this an anger matchup? Yeah, not according to Ross, which makes sense, I guess. Like especially if we're leaving these in. Like, if we're leaving these in and we have these, like, maybe Anger of the Gods is just bad. Also opens our thing in the ice is up to getting bolted. Uh, so I don't, th I don't think so. Like, our plan is to keep their five plus, uh, or their, like, four or five power things off the table so their phoenixes just don't matter. Like, our idea is to, like, pick all that stuff up with thing in the ice. Which maybe means I popped my thing in the ice too quick. But, like, either way, I think trying to, like, account for that is pretty poor. I think we're playing a little faster. We're at least even on time here. I really feel like this is an anger matchup. I don't know. Ross Manning doesn't, and I assume he knows a little bit more than I do. Because, like, I mean, a lot of the threats we're leaving in are really bad against anger. You know what I'm saying? Like, we don't even have drakes. Like, our plan is... Um, yeah, we'll just play this. Our plan is to, um, like, use Monastery Suspirs and, like, Phoenixes and stuff. And things... Things that are weak to uh, Leyline as well, like uh, Bellum Reveler. So, like, if we bring in Anger and they have, like, Leyline, like, our whole, like, plan just looks really awkward and clunky. Uh, that's my that's uh, what I assume his logic is. Um, I don't actually know, because, I, like, I haven't talked to him about it outside of just, like, reading his article, but that just seems like that makes sense to me. But, I mean, I could, I could buy that it is, like, supposed to be an Anger matchup. Like, the Cyborg Guide is from, uh, from quite a while ago. Is Halloween coming back? Like, this is the second league we've, I've played against it. Is that a deck people think is good again? Like, I guess there's less Reflector Mages going around, which is what Ross said was true. Then it's just, like, it's 
that's fine. Like that's like a true statement, right? This is an interesting little combo, like two negative card advantage cards. Like if we don't draw a Phoenix or whatever, we're just gonna like Lightning X pitching Faithless Looting. Interesting to see them take a bolt. Well, that was a good draw. Let's just hit them real quick. I think I'm gonna fetch a mountain with this land. We have a lot of red red cards in our hand, and it looks to me like the spells we're gonna be casting are gonna require a lot of like like if we're gonna play a flurry of spells, it's gonna involve more red spells than blue spells. So that is why we're gonna sequence like this. Okay. They thought sees thir thirteen. There's no dust shadows, so like this this thirteen is actually pretty good for us. This can't be a delve threat yet. Pretty interesting. It's pretty interested in a burning inquiry here. I'm not in love with these spells for any reason. And like if we discard looting, we feel pretty good. It looks to be just a goblin more though. Collective brutality. Kill this. Eat instant destruction. Oh, just like all three modes. Alright. Discarded goblin more. That looks pretty good for us if they're just like doing that, right? Like and not literally anything else with their turn anamorphose blue red they discarded bolt goblin lore very interesting I'd like to draw blue cantrip here that's why I made blue mana and like obviously we can't cast lightning x oh blue red uh well that's weird ooh faithless looting we can discard a faithless looting now so casting the first faithless looting is fine uh Yeah, I like this turn. All right, go. Put our thing down to two counters. Uh, we have an abrade. We also have a lightning axe for like a bigger creature. So we're, we're kind of like encroaching on being able to like kind of just pick up their board and hit them down to like bolt range here. Liliana of the Veil. Well, I didn't expect the one of. Got me. Liliana of the Veil against the Arclight deck. You got me. A Sister Spear. Got, I guess got shots out of the deck. Lightning Bolt. Thing in the Ice. I want to hold Lava Axe, I think, for a little while. Um, I think Opt is pretty good. So I'm going to discard... Actually... What is my plan? I'm gonna discard this, this. Then I'm just gonna pass. I'm probably discarding the abrade, unless they play like a uh, hollow one first. We might just die to this Liliana. That Liliana is gonna look incredible here. I mean, obviously if we had phoenixes, it would look pretty bad, but we've been through a fair number of cards and not seen any phoenixes, so it's gonna look pretty bad here. And, like, I think that was our window to hit it with Swiss Spears, so I don't know what this opt is looking for, but I don't think the braid's doing anything. This looks to be a fish. We discarded both lightning axes, so our only way to answer it is the two thing in the ice is left of the deck. And we're probably just dead. Probably gonna lose the hollow one here. Alright. Well, I guess. <laughs> of course. Uh... And, like, getting up to, like, a critical mass of spells is just not gonna be possible with, uh... Liliana plusing, so they can just like easily plus Liliana here again. And they just discard the Starlight Phoenix. And we're just like not in great shape. If we do draw Lightning Bolt, we're in pretty okay shape though. Although this is a three turn clock. We've lost a fair amount of life to just like um, them burning us with um, Collective Brutality and our own lands. Yeah, this makes sense. I think we need to draw Lightning Bolt to be in this game. Damping Sphere, interesting. It's another Delph Threat. It's a Terminate? My gosh. I don't know what we can hit, but I mean, it's just getting discarded otherwise. Lightning bolt. All right, we're good. That's pretty unfortunate. I think this matchup's pretty good. The Liliana was quite a blowout though. Like, I mean, we won it in the last league and I mean, lost to it there. 
And it also is weird that like, I don't know. It's, it feels it feels so odd that we felt so far ahead when they're just like casting spells and like not actually applying any pressure in the early game, and then like, we just kind of like our spells were all card disadvantage. Like we drew all of the like lootings and lightning axes, so like we couldn't really sequence anything well, and ended up just like getting really low on cards to where Liliana of the Veil just like absolutely wrecked us, which is awkward because like I feel like the cards should be pretty bad, especially out of their deck. Like maybe out of Jund where there's a couple more removal spells. It would be a little bit better. But I feel like on average, Liliana of the Veil against us is not going to be very good. But like all we had really going for us was a thing in the ice. And we did like we didn't see any Phoenixes in the first bunch of cards. We saw a bunch of the card disadvantage cards, so we got to shred our hand and catch our like thing in the ice, and we just like died. That was that was rough. That was pretty rough. The Bud Monster. This has a lot of creatures in it, but it has a Faithless Looting, so I think it's going to be hard to mulligan this. Especially on the draw. Like, threat and the threat and the, like, cantrips. Like, we just can't mulligan this. Feathermark has kind of been a little clunky and awkward, though, so far. I mean, we've only played against Hollow One, but, like, it just probably would have been better as a spell that one turn. Um, okay. I don't really know what just happened. Uh. Ew. Okay. Well, with no information, I'm probably going to bring in two surgicals. Oh, never mind. We did it! <laughs> Bud Monster did not want to play with me. Rip Bud, Bud Monster. I don't know why Bud Monster didn't want to play with me, but I guess we did it. All right, so we're still technically 0-1 in this league, but we did get a free match win, I guess, which value, but I came here to play test, so that's kind of awkward. Yeah, I don't know what the heck that was. Saw the name, got scared. Yeah, no kidding. Like, oh, Viral Drake? That has Infect. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I'm Draconic on this one. Okay, I don't know. Astral Plane. Isn't that somebody notable? Astral Plane actually might be somebody. Might be somebody. This hand is great. Spiral of Canal is a busted magic card. We have the best card in the deck. Thing in the ice. We got Swiss Spear. This hand's fantastic. We're going to dookie them. It's going to be a good time. Alright, take that. We have a gut shot, but we're still going to F6 anyway. Oh no, Tron! Well, I feel like this is probably a fine hand-ish against Tron. Oh, we probably need to put Thing in the Ice in play still, but it just feels like we're so likely to die. Um, so what matters against Tron? Like, Bolts? Gosh, Life Total sure doesn't. Um, yeah, we'll just put a Thing in the Ice in play and, like, attack with Sphere, I guess. Like, also is going to, like, this is going to insure us against uh, Worm Coil Engine. But, like, they could just have literally anything else and we're probably going to die. I think he plays KCI. Never mind. He has an interesting KCI deck. It still plays Artifacts. I mean, now we get to, like, test how bad this matchup is, right? Like, it doesn't feel super awesome right now on this side. But I don't know what their side looks like. Like, this is good against Worm Coil, which normally would, like, be a pretty good card against this deck, I think. And, like, a lot of our hands, because, like, this doesn't kill it. You know, this sure as hell doesn't kill it. But, like, you know, to pick it up is pretty nice. But we also don't have any of our busted Phoenix, like, draw cards. So I think we're pretty likely to just die. That is the best possible thing we could see. Was Forest there to give us an extra turn. And like, hopefully now we get to, like, cast all these magic cards. Where is this power plant? Deal. Alright, Spire Bluff Canal. Not exciting. Same visions. Oh. Uh, always yield, always yield. Oh, gosh. Ooh, uh, draw a spell. Spell. Not land. Not land. Not land. Please not land. 
please tilt. Uh, the second thing in the ice I think is bad. The Faithless Looting is going to be fantastic. Um, put this in play. Combat. Attack for two. Um, yeah. This is probably not going to be fast enough, for being honest. Uh, but, you never know. We have Faithless Looting, Flashback Faithless Looting, plus Gutshot to, like, do things next turn. Star is fine. But, like, they're literally on Ugin mana. So, we probably need a lot to go right. I'm interested to see if this is a Sylvan Scrying or, like, an Ancient Stirrings. Relic? Oh, jeez. Well, that means we have to sequence correctly. Which involves... Playing our land? Whatever, Faithless Looting. Alright. Tilt. Now our Phoenix draws are just, like, bad. Um... Discard Lightning Axe Land. Yeah. We're going to play... We're actually not going to flash this back, so if they want to crack the Relic, that's fine. We're going to play another Swiss Spear. I think? This might have been bad. Hmm... Yeah, yeah, if we're, if we're going to fade this looting, that was bad. Whatever. Who, if they have Dismember, I guess. I don't know. I guess it does play around Dismember. Who? Boop. Surinfringe is good. Um, just card this, this, this. Pay two life. Yeah, we would be able to serum visions here, but instead we can't because I'm kind of a forehead and played the Suspir instead of probably just discarding is what, sh what I should have done. Although it does kind of play around Ugin like in a strangely elegant way. Like we get to pick up two threats and like hit them for seven. I don't know. Could be good. 15, put them to eight. Like we would, we need to draw like some spells, but it might, it might, it might play around Ugin in a strange way. That's fine. We didn't have any phoenixes anyway. Only had two Faithless Lootings that I guess didn't really matter that much. Creature for seven. And they have to have it here. If they have Karn, we actually can beat that. Because it's just Swiss Spear, Swiss Spear Visions. Uh, beats a Karn. If they have Ugin. We kind of can beat that. We can at least put them dead to Lightning Bolt, which is a good spot to be in. Oblivion Stone is bad. Um... Combat. So answer to Kraken Horror is reasonable. Okay. Uh don't wanna don't really want to play these. I think I do kind of want to see visions. Arc Light Phoenix. Um Interesting. Top. I'm going to top tops. It's just both spells. Um, maybe I'm supposed to play a Swiss Spear. I might be supposed to play one of these Swiss Spears. I think I'm going to play one, hold the other. Just to, like, be able to play the second one and then metamorphose into the Thought Scour. Just, like, get the most triggers going and, like, give me the best chance to kill them. Because we... I mean, assuming they have nothing, we don't need to get that high on spell count to kill them. We just need to cast three, and we have two that we know we can cast. So, I mean, this is assuming they have nothing, which is just an absurd claim with them having seven cards in hand. They're just, like, trying to think of the best thing they can play. Which is probably just Worm Coil Engine. <laughs> Five mana. What is six, seven? Karn is fine. I don't really know what to expect here. 
They grabbed Ulamog with Ceaseless Hunger. Sure. Exile Swiss Spear. Okay. Relic. That's fine. Okay. Well, if we can find a Lightning Bolt, we're actually probably not that bad of shape. Um, Swiss Spear. Blue, red, morphos. Okay, this, this might be a hopeless game, but I guess we could technically string together a string of bolts, so I think it is worth continuing playing. Yeah. Bolts. Need a bolt. No, that's the bolt I wanted. Actually, it's right there. Uh, combat. Okay. No, I don't want to attack Karn. Attack you. It's your five. And I guess we'll play a land. Might should have held that, but I think I want to play it if they decide to Ulamog me. Like I have Arclight Phoenix. Um, like currently Arclight Phoenix plus Bolt wins. Let's see if they actually have the Ulamog. I assume they do. Tower Ulamog's not asking a lot out of seven cards. That doesn't cast an Ulamog. This is nine. This is the Ballista for a million. Oh, wait. Am I dumb? Oh, there's a forest. Crap. Never mind. Yeah, never mind. I just cast Ulamog. Dumb. This is going to be Swiss Spear Land. It was not Swiss Spear Land. Okay. I guess you just exile it next turn. It has to be like Bolt in the Bolt. Um, oh no. All right. Opt. Bolt. Bolt. Uh. All right. Yeah, we're done. All right. Exile card from my hand. Attack. I guess we'll just like wait and see. It's like, if they like exile this, attack me to three, technically I could draw a bolt and opt into a bolt. Which is like, obviously, now we're just dealing with a really small chances. But we've only been through one, so it's not impossible if they just like literally have nothing else to just like kind of punk them out. All right, now I think we're done. Okay. No, that's not true, because if they attack, then we just don't block. And we draw a bolt. So currently that is the plan. If they don't attack, Dramatic Seer is fine. Green mana. If we put anything in the way or don't attack, we can't win. We still have Tron up after this. Probably just a clinic. Can I ask about the glasses? I like them, but are they any particular person? The glasses are for, um, they're, they like filter out blue light. It's like designed to reduce eye strain if you like look at screens for really long hours. What did they grab? I didn't even see. Walking Ballista? Yeah, sure. You win. Um, but yeah, no, like they're, I don't know, they're for computer vision syndrome. It's something that I looked into, especially because like I was feeling a little bit of eye strain. Like, because on days like today, I work like eight hour day looking at a computer the whole time and then I come home and stream for close to four hours. I mean, I've been live for three hours and 50 minutes. So I stream for close to four hours. So if you do the math, I spend like close to 12 hours like looking at a computer during like specifically today but on other days as well like the ice stream was getting really bad and like i shouldn't probably be getting ice stream that bad when i'm this young so i like just kind of like asked for some computer glasses for christmas to help with ice stream and so far they've actually helped a fair amount like it is noticeable like they're not like changing my life over here or anything but like they do like help with the ice stream like my eyes don't feel as strained like i'm still just as tired and all the other things but like my eyes my specifically my eyes do feel better so yeah i got them for work since i will probably be working in front of a computer screen for the rest of my life and yeah so that yeah like i have i still have 20 vision there's no prescription on this so like it isn't like it's helping my like I, I improve my eyesight or like magnification anyway in fact magnification would hurt my eyesight so fortunately there's none of that on here do we, do we bring in disdainful stroke 
It feels pretty mopey. Like, what is your plan here? Like, these are this is the catch early stuff. Like, planning to counter their big stuff seems stupid. You dead AF famo? Yeah, correct. Taught myself the basics of USB audio interfaces, XLR microphones. That seems incredibly smart. That seems way smarter than I am. Yeah, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna submit like this. Hopefully, I didn't miss anything obvious. I think Battle and Bravler is still fine. Post board. I think this hand is good. I feel inclined to just hold up like an answer here. Maybe maybe that's bad. Because, like, if they have map into, like, Tron land map, like, if they have specifically land map, um, like, second Tron land crack, like, I feel a little dumb, but I really want to get this in play. Mm, I'm impatient. Boop. I want to be able to use my mana and actually start pressuring. So, like, I want to get my threat down. And like if they have, if they have a Sylvan Scrying hand, however, like Spellbearers is gonna be great. If they have like an Ancient Strings hand off of a rock, like Spellbearers is gonna be great. Like there's so many situations where Spellbearers is great. Like here, Spellbearers is great. Um, oh, of course we do the Serum Visions, right? Um, here we're just gonna attack. We're gonna bolt in step if they do not do anything. What are they doing? They do. I don't know what's happening here. Reveler seems mopey in the face of relics, though, right? I agree. It feels wrong having a stroke and not bring, bring it in. I don't know. Stroke is just awkward. Um, yeah, relic. Maybe Reveler is awkward in the face of relic. We could, like, loot it away, I suppose, in the same situations, but... If this is a Sylvan Scrying, it is getting so spell-pierced. It is not. It is a forest, and they're saying go. Oh, never mind. It is not a force, and they are not saying go, and we are spell piercing that. Stop! Stop drawing! I don't want you to draw on. Also, no Alpine Moon here. Really feeling it. Tilt. Uh, we're much likely to much less likely to have Serum Rejection actually hit. So I'm gonna Serum Visions to try to get this Stony Silence in play. Doop 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 doop. Please land. My opponent, waiting to respond to my monastery Swiss spear trigger. Please. Land. Well, those are lands, but they don't cast... Oh, no, we have Manamorphos. Yeah, this deck's just busted. Put on top, put on top. Combat. Attack for two. So if they play, like, I don't know, Oblivion Stone, Snowy Sounds is going to look really good. Oh no. Warping well. Okay, that's fine. Um I don't know if I like playing Thing in the Ice more or less than I like trying to put Stony Sounds in play this turn. I don't think they have another way to put lands into play because I don't think Swiss Spear was enough of a problem. So I think we actually do have the flexibility to do this this turn. And next turn we get to play the mountain that we know is on top. Uh, Metamorphose into the Stony Silence. And then we get to hold up Ceremonious Rejection. Which is really attractive. Uh-oh, Dismember. Okay. They should have a million removal spells. That is fine. This Reveler will be better then. We're still going to make the same play. It's just we don't have a thing in the ice we're getting value out of. Scrying. That's pretty bad. Hopefully, Stony Silence plus Ceremonious Rejection will be enough to like slow them down, considering they had a pretty interactive hand that was pretty slow as well. Um, like, if they owe Stone here, it's like completely fine. They did not, however. Alright. Blue, Metamorphose. Into, I don't know, blue, white. Um, cast the Stony Silence. We have three spells in Graveyard, so if they don't cast anything that gets Ceremony Destructions, we're once again going to Bolt to try to get to this Bedlam Reveler faster. Horizon Canopy is interesting. Ancient Strings, I cannot counter that. Boop, doop, 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 doop. Sanctum of Ugin, I cannot counter that either. Plays. <clears throat> the Ragtusk, I also cannot counter that. <coughs> well, never mind. Now we're going to bolt the Thrag Tusk. 
because it has five power. Lightning bolt that. All right, that's awkward, but I think we need to empty this hand for Bellum Reveler. Ugh. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We could cast it, but I still feel like Ceremony Rejection is supposed to be held up. Awkward. Reveler's really awkward. Um, definitely I'm playing it next turn if we... My opponent doesn't do anything here, but I still think I want to insulate myself, especially because they like had a Sanctum of Ugin. I think they decided to wait just to make sure they could crack and get something else to cast. And so we're going to need the Reveler to find me like another Ceremony Rejection or something after this. This game kind of didn't really play out the way I wanted it to at all. Like, they had, like, the two removal spells that they needed when they needed them. Um, didn't get to Ceremonious Rejection that turn, which is, like, really disastrous. Um, this is just, like, a billion mana. Oh, jeez. Okay. I wonder if they still have both Ulamogs in their deck. We're about to find out. If they have both Ulamogs in their deck, we probably can't win. But otherwise, I think we can. Because we can obviously ceremonious rejection this one. But I want them to make their decision on their Sanctum move again. A Worm Qual Engine? Yeah, see, we can beat that. Um, ceremonious rejection that. And get all my lands exiled. Just naturally had the Ugin. They grabbed the Worm Coil. So we're, we're drawing live to a second ceremonious rejection. In order to not die to a Worm Coil Engine. Or, of course, just like Thing in the Ice is still fine. Let's grab. I have a blue source here. Kind of want the white source because it's drawn in the Stony Silence. You grab the white source. We also need just like a second red. Alright. Uh, yeah, this will help us find it, right? No, because it's mana neutral on casting this. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. So we can try to find a ceremony rejection with us. Just give me like infinity more looks. Infinity more looks. Bottom. Bottom. Red, red. Cast the Reveler. Alright, Reveler, be good. It's fine. It's not insane. Well, I think we're going to hold all these spells. Hopefully all they have is a Worm Coil Engine. If they have more, we're probably dead. Tron always has more. Yeah, there's Ancient Stirrings. Jeez. Jeez. Oblivion Stone? Sure. I think you're inclined to still play the Worm Coil Engine. Yeah. This is the Oblivion Stone just insurance in case things go wrong. And you get to crack Horizon Canopy. Um, alright, still a decent board state for Thing in the Ice. Boop. Yeah, I lied. Okay. I think we're going to leave off with thoughts going myself. If we can find some Arclight Phoenixes, I feel a little bit better about the way this is going. Stony Silence is a nice one. Um, thing is, we really don't have a plan for this Worm Coil engine. Yeah, I'm definitely putting Stony Silence in play. I think I'm going to hold these two metamorphoses again. We can, like, I don't know. We can hope to find a thing in the ice faster. It's realistically what we're doing. And then, like, if we can thing in the ice plus set up, like, a big combo turn with, like, some bolts and stuff, like, like, it's asking a lot, but I think that's our route to victory. Surgical target ceremonious rejection. Uh, sure. Yeah, my hand's double metamorphose. Ugh. I feel pretty dead, but unfortunately, Tron is one of those decks that doesn't actually kill you for a while, so I have to keep playing because, like I said, I'm trying to describe the lines I'm actually playing to. I mean, I don't think I'm asking for a ton. Like, Ceremonies Rejection, I don't even think it was a good draw at this point in the game anyway, so I'm pretty fine with that. But if they have, I mean, I assume they have Shadow Flames over here that we're, we're going to concede to. Yeah, all right. We got dumpstered. Game is hard. Match is hard. All right, what are we? We're technically 0-2 in played matches. We beat the crap out of somebody who was not ready to play against me. But um, 
I mean, the Hollow One is... Hollow One was an odd match, for sure. Jeez, the, the trophy leader has 12 trophies on the, like, next runner-up in this. Jeez, this is nuts. 31 trophies. Anyways. Um, yeah, the, the Hollow One match... I think we kind of just like kind of fizzled out and died. We've drawn Reveler in all these games, and every game it's been like fine. I don't actually know if it was better or worse than anything else. We've also haven't seen very many Phoenixes. Like I'm not sure we've actually put a Phoenix in play yet, right? Like it's just it's been it's been rough finding our Phoenixes, which this deck looks a lot mopier when you're not like drawing your Arclight Phoenixes. So I think we've gotten a little unlucky. And I mean Tron's a bad matchup. We we don't even have the Alpine Moon and Stony Silence Clear wasn't enough in those games. The right hand also, that game in particular, lined up very well against ours. It's like two removal spells exactly when they needed them for both our early creatures that were like going to kill them. Hey, great poker hand. Look at this. Look at that. Opponent Mulligan the six as well. Deciding on their multi five. But it's they mulligan to five. I think we have to keep this. Deciding on the mold of four. This much mulliganing makes me think it might be Tron again. But I think that... Oh, that's good. That's a good draw. Our deck... Like, I think Reveler is probably not good in this deck. It's kind of cute with Thing in the Ice, but... I don't know. It's been kind of clunky, especially post-sideboard. Maybe I'm supposed to cut them more. Like, it's very reasonable that I'm just sideboarding badly with Reveler in my deck. But I feel like it is something... Like, it's a card that we need... In our deck, just to keep our threat count high. Because so we don't have access to Crackling Drake. But that assessment could just be very wrong. I'm, I'm willing to accept that and would probably need to play. I mean, I have a couple more matches to play, so hopefully we can learn it a little bit more. This is looking like Shadow off the bat. I'm inclined to think this is Shadow. Yeah, this is probably Grixis Shadow. This is a match I'm interested in playing. Ross was kind of uneasy about this one in his article, and I'm... Not super sure of it myself, so I'm pretty interested to play against Shadow. Um, yeah, Thing in the Ice, still very good. But they're very good at answering it, too. They have, like, a lot of pushes, right? And also, this card's, like, a little awkward against Shadow. Not sure if we should be helping them get their life total low. Still don't really have any Phoenixes going for us, though. Can't play Shadow still in this turn, so I think attacking last turn was fine. Boop. Back up to four cards. We have a lightning bolt. We have two lightning bolts for reach. That'll actually probably help a lot. Um, Maybe should have thought guard first. Uh, yeah, because like here now I want like kind of both of these cards. Although I can just share visions again um, to grab the thing in the ice and hide the lightning axe. I think I want both of these. And I, I could draw another same Visions like a professional. So I can just like cycle into these and try to find a land. I guess they're going to push this. Dismember it. Pretty excited about that, knowing that I have a thing in the ice at the top of my deck. I think I like I think I like this sequence. So like we can lightning axe if we want. Like if they only play like one shadow next turn, there's a chance we just like thought scour them to like lightning axe it. That's pretty desperate. And like here they're not even shocking. Which I don't find very shocking. Uh -huh. Alright. Hopefully they're pretty low on removal at this point in time and this card's going to stick around. If it doesn't, however. We are still okay, I think, because Revler's actually probably going to look pretty good in this match. What are you doing? Terminate. Oof. That's pretty rough. I won't lie to you, that is pretty rough. Serum Visions is fine. Hold them down to six. Their street racing. That's pretty good. 
Thought sees me to seven. There's no sense bolting here. I want to see what they're going to put in play. They're going to take a lightning bolt most likely. If they take Raveler, that's pretty aggressive. Especially going to seven. They're like a virtual one. You know? <laughs> Just like literally dead to get shot. Whoa! I guess they have a stubborn. That has to be what that means, right? Well, no threat here means that I'm thought scouring this lightning X away. Because I don't want another piece of removal. There's an Arc Light Phoenix and another Arc Light Phoenix. <clears throat> okay. There's two more Arc Light Phoenixes. Well, you look dead, opponent. Yes. You went too low. Bolt you. Oh, they don't want to play magic. I don't understand. What do you mean? See, this deck just looks like a completely different animal when you draw your when you draw your when you draw your freaking phoenixes. Gosh, this deck, <laughs> this deck looks pretty unbeatable. But it can look pretty mopey if you're not drawing if you're not drawing those phoenixes like we haven't in some of our other matches. Uh, where is Grixis Shadow? Mm -hmm. Let's see what our general plan is here. Not a lot of changes. Apparently, this card is bad. Apparently, this spell is okay. Might bring in a spell pierce. Oh, this seems to be kind of the change that Ross was looking to do. Um, now we're sure we want Gutshot, probably just to like it's incidental burn, which is close enough. He he has it has him bringing in a dispel. I'll bring in spell pierce. It's close enough. Drake, stop being so good. You make us look bad. I don't know about that Inferno. Hey, did you were you here for the previous league? Did you watch me? So bad. It's okay. It was my it was my first like. I guess not my first, like, league of taking it seriously. Because, like, I, I guess I did, like, kind of try to take it seriously. But the previous leagues I played with this deck, I just kind of was, like, too early to write it off. That I was like, oh, this deck's just not very good. Because I was just, like, kind of playing it badly. Then watching people play it better, I feel more comfortable with it being good. And so now I'm just, like, obviously trying to work on myself playing it. So I feel, I feel more comfortable this league. I think probably another ten matches or so, and I'll feel really, really comfortable with it. But... Um, this hand is interesting. Like, the looting's good. No blue sources is weird. I think I'm keeping this. I think your opponent mulliganed really low last game, right? Yeah, they mulled like, five, so... It doesn't... It makes sense that, like, they just kind of, like, did nothing and died. Even though, like... I mean, we did have three phoenixes on turn four, but, like... Around a discard spell. But... Like, our opponent also mulled to, like, five... Um, I suspect they're taking Faith of Sluting. It's the best card in our hand and also lets us find a blue source for Serum Visions. But I guess we have Manamorphos for Serum Visions anyway on turn two, if we can hit it. But it's asking a lot. Ooh. We might just have a turn two fiend. No, we have to get a third life. All right. Whatever, we can serve, we can conserve our life total. This, this will make sure that, like, we can definitely get Phoenix back and play Phoenix with all these free spells. They're going to be kind of medium, but, like, I mean, if they decide to, like, get their life total wall themselves because we're just not moving right now, then it's going to be pretty good for us. I think they have to take Metamorphose here. I think it's a pretty clear Metamorphose. If we draw any land, though, we can flashback looting and then get to Gutshot, Gutshot. To get back Phoenix still, which is nuts. Um, he did not draw the land, but we have another step to hit it, so I'm just going to pass. We discarded two spells, you can get down to four spells, but we're still, oh, that's still a four mana reveler, so we need, we need more to happen. Thoughtseize, sure. I think they should take a gut shot here. I don't like that. I mean, it's good against them. This card is definitely good against them, but they've been pretty aggressive on taking this. We're pretty far from casting it, and being able to gut shot, gut shot is pretty good. Uh, yeah, I mean, they still can't cast a shadow, so we're going to sit and wait. Fifth card, they can now cast Gurmag Angler. And, like, previously, if we still had Reveler in our hand, I would be incentivized to play Gurmag Angler to, like, try to, like, bolt, cut shot, cut shot it. To, like, just, like, get cards out of my hand. But without Reveler in play, I'm saving these for face, I think. Snapcaster Mage. That is fine. Target Thoughtseize. 
Okay. I feel like once they cast once they cast Thoughtseize, I should bolt them. Because like they just don't have a ton going on, and like that puts them to five, which puts them in bolt range if they don't take a gut shot, right? Yeah. Like they don't want to take this. I wonder if they know. Like if they take this, there's no way they understand that. Like <laughs> they're so close to getting phoenixed. Yeah, they were just dead to any land in that in that sequence there. Uh, yeah, let's fade this looting. That was a good draw. Fade this looting. Discard. This and this. Then we get two more spells. All right. Eh. I'm attracted to the gut shot. So I'm gonna discard Metamorphose instead. Blue, same visions. See if we can get him dead. Bolt. Oh no! The Phoenix! Bottom. Yeah, I'll put this on top. Red. Gut shot you. We can put him to one. With the Phoenix coming back this turn. And a second Phoenix in hand. And the land to cast it. If they do something to this Phoenix in hand, then we will just flashback Faithless Looting. But I mean, we're so far from dead. That it's gonna be. I, th I think it's gonna be pretty hard to lose this game. They have to have double removal spell. So shadow. I don't know. This this shadow player kind of did nothing and died. Like normally shadow, I expect them to like put like a shadow or a uh, delve threat into play by turn two. And I think what's their turn four? No, it's their turn five, and they haven't put anything fat in play. There's a shadow in the graveyard. Just like dead to the phoenix. I I don't think. Shadow just kind of bricks off and dies like that very often. So I think that was kind of a unique match. But it was kind of nice to see that, like, it kind of feels a little bit like the burn matchup where you just have a bunch of burn spells and a bunch of, like, things to pressure them. And so you kind of make them do the damage to themselves. And then if you can sling a bunch of bolts, gut shots, and phoenixes at their face, like, you can just kind of punk them out if they decide to get their life total low. Otherwise, they're just not putting shadows in play. And so the best creatures are probably the delve threats. But those do die to Lightning Axe. Like, having Lightning Axe in our deck has to, like, make it at least a little bit better. Uh, three lands, four spells, none of them Faithless Looting. Put a Lightning Axe. On the play, I think it's good enough. If it's not a creature deck, this hand's probably not good enough. But I think we, can, we are pretty likely to hit a threat in the first turn or two with this hand. Um, also helps that we have Bedlam Reveler in our deck, specifically with this style of hand, because we just have a bunch of spells that, like, feel the Bedlam Reveler, and if we draw it, like, even if we've just been slinging spells that are, like, kind of card disadvantage or whatever, like, uh-oh, is this the mirror? Oh, no, it's Storm! Well, Storm is kind of like, Storm, these are live, which is good enough. It's probably still not a very good matchup. In fact, I think this is one of the harder ones, but I don't know, I've never played it. I'm excited to actually play this one. Blue. Oh. Don't think I want an extra bolt. Don't think I want an extra lightning axe. Oh, Reveler's interesting. Not scare me. Oh man, another land is really, really bad. Um, I guess we have like lightning axe on instep if they do play a land. I mean, if they do play a bear. Does not look like they intend to do so. One, two, three. We have three spells in our yard. So we're probably going to die. We have multiple removal spells for multiple bears, but they can pretty reasonably kill us without bears. And we just don't have a lot going on. I'm wondering if Bedlam Rattler is actually better than Crackling Drake in this game. I literally don't know the answer. All right, this is their in-step gifts turn. I'm supposed to bolt them. Feels a little stupid. Hey, that's a good one. They might just not have it. What's up? This is the audio setup I was talking about. What is what is what does it mean? What does it all mean, Inferno? Tell me what it means. I don't know. Um, yeah, let's just card lightning axe. Scalding Tarn. 
Um, I can play land Morphos Bolchu. One, two, three, four, five. I want to hold up a land. I want to hold up Bolt for sure. I think. I don't know. Let's see. Let's fetch an island. One, two, three, four, five. There's five spells. Metamorphos. I'm going to go into blue red. Gosh, that's a lot of lands. Okay. I could play Reveler there. I don't think I want to. I think I want to try to catch a pair. Or I want to. Like just have a better turn. Yeah, this is this is gonna be the uh, gifts. Gifts turn, which makes sense. Obviously, gonna bend both rituals. Just to constrict their mana. Also makes it more awkward if they have a bear, because they can't just like respond with anything other than a metamorphose. But I think we're just dead. Like this hand, this hand is like one of those fizzle and dies. We kept four spells, uh, three lands, and now have six lands by turn four and no creatures in play. Just like all we did was move a bunch of stuff around and die. Uh bear. You can have the bear. You mean means you have metamorphose? I mean, it means you have the passive flames already. Uh, we'll just bend the rituals. I'm still gonna bend the rituals. Going to lightning axe the bear if he plays it. I assume he will. Yep. Play your first spell. It's gonna be the metamorphose. Let's discard a card. Discard this. And they cast the ritual, which gives you exactly five mana, but doesn't let you cast back fast and flames. That does. All right. That's a lot of metamorphoses. All right, probably dead. Hit the remand. Did not hit a remand. Noxious Revival, back the bear. Is this deterministic? Let's see. One, two, four. And the cost three, go to two. One, 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 yeah, dead. Three metamorphoses in response. I guess I should have held up Bolt too. I thought holding up one would be fine-ish, but I, I mean, I, I had to be aware that like we were getting close to like just dying range. I don't think we were winning that game anyway. But yeah, I'll have to, I'll have to look at that later, Inferno. I, I know next to nothing about sound systems, and I also like, yeah, I wouldn't even know how to process what you showed me. Um... Crackling Drakes. Probably means these need to come out. In the counter spells, I think this one's also very good. And the surgicals. Alright. Um, I think the spear's good. I think this is a little awkward. But I think it's fine. Lightning Axe is unexciting, but fine the gut shot's already out of the deck um i don't want to cut a creature so it's all about what spell do i think is the worst i think thought scour is the worst so i'm gonna cut a thought scour all right let's try this thought scour might be the wrong cut because it's in speed and i want to be holding up a lot of counter spells during this games so like i can definitely see an argument for um, like wanting the instant speed more. This hand is good. Boop. 
Thing is empty insurance. Yeah, that's true. I don't think they bring in Thing again in the ice against this. I mean, not Thing in the ice. Oh my gosh. Empty the Warrens against this, right? Because, like, they have to know we have to leave this card in. Like, it's aggressive, so we just have to leave it in. Our opponent's mulling 2 5. That's pretty good. We probably have a solid chance to win this one. All right. Red, Swiss Spear. Call that. Hi ya. Take that. Serum. Oh, yeah, you think Serum's worse? Yeah, that's what I'm saying, Kaizen. It's like, I don't know if Serum is... Like, Serum is the better cantrip in the abstract, but, like, um, the instant speed might matter a little bit more. No, you're good. You're good. It could also just be, like, a stream delay or whatever. But, no, I think I think your points... I think your points definitely worth considering. I don't know if it's right or not. I mean, it's hard to say what's strictly right, right? Um, I don't think my life total matters too much. Famous last words. I don't think my life total matters too much. Uh, chalk this. But I, I just want to make sure my mana is good. Game the ice. Combat. Yeah. And then we want we want to, we want to not F six to hold up to like represent surgical, which is unfortunate because it just means more clicking for me. Free spells are the worst. It's like playing Legacy. This deck is a lot like playing Legacy, I suppose. Like, you have a bunch of free spells. You, like, have a bunch of moving parts. Everything's one mana. It does feel a lot like playing, like, a Shadow deck or a Legacy deck. Tap land, huh? All right. It's an Arc Light Phoenix. Would have liked to have thought scoured that. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. They are not F6. They are holding up their opt, I guess. Uh, well, that was pretty bad. Not scaring me. Serum Visions is a good hit. Um, I think I'm going to fetch an island here. Actually, I think no matter what, I'm probably going to fish shock next turn anyway. So, if that's true, I should just shock this in. Yes. Serum Visions. If we get a free spell, I think I'm just flipping this thing in the ice here, right? Okay, it's an arc light phoenix. Put on bottom. Oh, we hit one off the the other thought scour, I guess. That's pretty sweet. I don't think we want this arc light phoenix. Mm, I'm gonna bottom it actually. Alright, combat. Get an arc light phoenix back. Attack for seven. Attacking for seven on turn three feels pretty good. And we also can just flip a thing in the ice if they play a creature. Um, need to Manamorphose pick the thing up. They, if they lose a single life point, they're dead because we can just Manamorphose into play uh, Arclight Phoenix from hand. And that puts them to one. Which is like, I think, another good reason why bottoming that was fine because. Okay, so we draw, like, Lightning Bolt, then Swiss Spirit into Lightning Bolt's better. I think if we draw any spell, it's just better, right? No, that's not true. It's, like, specifically Lightning Bolt, actually. That's fine. Serum Visions is good. No matter what, we're pretty unlikely to die on the next turn. I think I might play it safe and just, like, hold Manamorphose as a, like, bounce spell. Ooh, are they going for it? What's happening here? Grape shot. Deal what? Two to that? Uh, okay. <laughs> sure. I was, I was gonna have to pick that up anyway. But, yeah, you did it. It's grape shot. Uh, bolt. That's an Aaron Mesa. Uh, yeah. Uh, Prowess after. Likely just casting Arc Light, putting him to one. There's merit to just not, not doing this, but if we draw a Lightning Bolt, we just win. Um, we can put Swiss Spear in play. And Manamorphose again. And that puts us to nine. I think we can just Manamorphose again anyway. Like, Swiss Spear plus Bolt is the out. 
Otherwise, it's just supposed to be casting... Ugh, that's awkward one. We're supposed to be casting Arcolite. Um... I don't know, they're unbelievably dead anyway. So maybe we are supposed to try to find some interaction or a lightning bolt. I'm actually gonna opt. Oh, well, that's pretty good. Yeah, we'll just put that on top. Now now they're just very, 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 very dead. Um so yeah, so spear. Faithless looting. Look at all these extra things I had. Discard this, this, yeah, they 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 get the idea. <laughs> All right, yeah, cool. I'm glad. I'm glad we took that line. I think that line was pretty high to kill. I didn't think about like faithless looting as an out. That's another card that would have been really good. I was playing the only lightning bolt. Um, yeah, let's put the thought scar back in the deck and cut a serum visions, like um, Kaizen was talking about. I like that a lot. Being able to play at instant speed, I think, is pretty important in this deck. So I think that's a that's a good that's a good change. Um, Three spell, three lands, four spells. We tried this once, right? How did that work out for us? Whatever, I think we have to keep this. It has a threat, plus like some interaction, plus lands and spells. Like, it's hard to really ask for more. Yeah, that's fine. Ugh. Like, this hand is probably not like anywhere close to the nut high of sevens that I would keep in this matchup, but I think it's far from the worst, so I don't know. I think it's a keep. That's a good draw, actually. I don't think life total matters a ton. I mean, it matters some, but I don't think it matters a ton, so I'm just going to fetch shock for the, at least the first turn. Alright. So a spear, the old Swifty. Hiya! All right, start attacking. Hopefully they missed their land drop. That would be super. This looks like a find the land drop. They did that quickly. They found their land. Yep. Oh, no. Now they have to look for more pieces. Surgical's a good draw, though. Um, so I don't want to show that I have surgical extraction, so I think I'm supposed to... Lead on. This is a lead on Faithless Looting, actually. So we can find some more like Phoenixes. Hello. Opponent. Let's see. Spell Pierce is actually really good. I think I'm interested in discarding Lightning Axe land I just don't think like we're going to need multiple removal spells along with a surgical and a spell pierce and I want to keep myself with plenty of spells to cast um, and we always have like faithless looting for more like removal later if we need it steam mints it's not an ideal draw um I'm to just put this land in pass. Like we have a lot of interaction, so like I just want to make sure I have all my interaction up and I don't die like like I did game one. Like we have this and this to beat a um, Gibson given this turn, and they're on five cards. Like this does in a sense give them time to build back up on cards, but like our card quality is very good, and I just want to make sure we don't get punked out. All right, they're just making land drops and passing with five cards in hand. A lot of cards. Um, I think I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna cycle the metamorphos here. And metamorphos. Once again, we are like like bolt does like shorten the clock significantly. Otherwise, we'd be in really bad shape. But the bolt, I think, is keeping us like reasonably in this game. Oh man. Um, I'm willing to flashback Faithless Looting. That does feel like it goes against like my plan of like don't get punked out and die. 
So I'm going to hold up two mana and play super conservatively. And try not to get punked out and die. So I'm going to hold up Bolt and Spell Burst. I plan on basically holding up Bolt and Spell Burst for the rest of this game. Kind of sucks that we don't get to use light, utilize that mana off the Manamorphose to fade the Looting this turn, because I really want to fade the Looting. Right, it's pretty easy Spell Pierce here, I think. Um, and I feel pretty incentivized to Surgical this. I don't know exactly when I'm supposed to do that, but I feel like that's an important part of the combo. I guess that gets blown out by uh, by Noxious Revival, right? Um, what do we think of Surgical and Gifts Given here? Those of you still in the chat, what do you think of G Surgical and Gifts Given here? Like, Surgical is actively good against the card Gifts Given, but, like, if they didn't board into their pieces plan and, like, their only plan is to, like, hard storm me after that, like, we're in pretty good shape, right? I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait a few seconds to see what you guys say. I have, I have a little bit of time, but... Not a bunch. Because I really don't know. Feels tempting to do. But that might just mean it's bad. Because, like, we can do it before they have, like, any real way to interact or just, like, cast another one. So, like, anyone, any of them that are stranded in their hand, like, if their plans just, like, gifts us into the ground, they're okay. I think I'm gonna do it. Surgical attack on Brandon says surgical. All right. I mean, I, I I I'm leaning towards doing it. So if you guys want me to stop, it should be. I don't know. Probably the way you should be arguing. I think I'm pretty easy to be talked into this. All right. Well, attack on Brandon. I'm gonna go with what you say. I'm gonna trust you. Surgical. Boop. All right. Please have some in hand. Or end a Noxious Revival. Noxious Revival is the biggest disaster. Um, I think that they have Varal Pass and Flames Desperate Ritual. Well, their hand doesn't do anything. Let's see. Let's see what needs to happen for them to win this game. That's something I think we should definitely look at now that we have the information. Um, they do have two pieces in the deck. That's unfortunate. They have two Anger the Gods in the deck. They do have an Empty the Warrens and three Grave Shots. So they need to like hit multiple Grave Shots with no cantrips. And I have a Lightning Bolt as backup for Baral. I think we're in pretty good shape. Yeah, no, I think that hand is, is a hand that Surgical and Gifts is very good against. They only have three. All right. I think we're, I think we're all right. I feel much more comfortable. Like the information game was really valuable. Like... I also think that, just, like, seeing gifts in their deck post board is pretty indicative that, like, they're still on not a great plan. Uh, I thought they revealed cards would be in the zone, but whatever. You know, Desperate Ritual, Brawl. Oh, jeez. Um, Pass and Flames. So, their hand obviously needed a lot. I didn't see any Lightning Bolts. They have anger in their deck. Yeah, I don't know why they have anger in the deck. I guess they're scared of phoenixes. Doesn't seem excellent. But what do I know? I am clearly not the expert here. Um, discard fetch. This. Put this into play tapped. Let's attack for two. We have not actually drawn very well off these lootings. We've looted away a lot of lands, I feel like. Like, yeah, there's five lands in our graveyard. I guess one of them was actually a fetch, but like... It feels like we've been through so many lands. Okay. This looks like a flashback cantrips plan. They have a second ritual. Uh, okay, we know Desperate Ritual Pass and Flames. I don't know if they're going to go for it here, but I mean, I think we're going to try to interact. Like, it just makes sense to try to interact to me. Uh, now, now we get to see if they want to full commit their desperate ritual, which doesn't look like they want to do. Yeah, they want to pass the flames at like a the flashback a cantrip. That's pretty reasonable. I I think that's a good play. 
I think flashing back, I think casting the other ritual maybe would have been a little bit better, right? They would have more blue mana to work with. I guess they have two. So holding out the ritual is good. We know Desperate Ritual, no other cards. Uh, second Surgical, I think, is the best drawn deck. Grabbing Passive Flames. They have like a billion mana, so... I mean, they have two Rituals and a billion mana, so they're getting kind of close-ish to a decent Passive Flames turn. Um, but they're, they still need a lot. Like, they're probably likely to die to this, just attacking for one for like five or six turns and like a bolt or two before they're going to kill me I think because they need to draw up to quite a few cards a second a second one's actually a fantastic draw I'm going to hold this land I think yeah I think I think it's going to be pretty hard for my opponent to win because I draw like literally any spell they're just in pretty rough shape <clears throat> I'm going to play thing in the ice and hold this land And I guess a series of three spells on our next turn would win the game, but that's obviously going to be pretty hard to ask out of my deck, so I'd probably need another turn after this. Noxious Revival Brawl on top. All right, that's probably a start. It blocks it at the very least. I don't think they want to try to go for it here. Oh, never mind, they have pieces. They probably do. Awkward. They hit in a braid. And a Grape Shot. Well, Ritual Grape Shot looks attractive. We're at 14. They put... Yeah, they, it looks like they took... Desperate Rituals. Five. Yeah, the, the one card has Grape Shot. Five. So they shoot us for six. I think we're actually done. Dang. Maybe we should have waited. Wait, did they already flashback Passing Flames? They can't get up to 14 Storm, right? Oh, they can put it on top of Noxious Revival. Okay. Yeah, no, never mind. We're, we're very, very dead. They can just put it on top of Noxious Revival and we're super dead. I think, I think this piece is just for show. Like, they should just grape shot me, knock Shrill back on top, can't trip it back into hand. And this gives them the blue mana, so you get, they get to just, like, do it out of hand anyway. Bleh. Another pieces. They drew the second pieces? Bleh. Pieces of the puzzle too strong. All right. We look dead. Finish me. Wait, what? Why are you even doing this? Oh, just to make sure it's lethal. Okay. In case I have, like, a counter spell, I guess. Still doesn't really make sense that they didn't. Just try to, like, creep shot me? I don't know what they're playing. What one card they're playing around. Because they're not playing around Mind Break Traps, so I don't really know. All right, yeah, we're dead. That was rough. Pieces of the Puzzle was probably one of the better draws they could have had. I I mean, I just put them on like they're never going to draw Pieces of the Puzzle. We're going to lose the game. When I like was telling you how much time I had. Because like, we should have had that much time, I think. like They had already been through a lot of cantrips and burned through like a Passive Flames cantrip turn. So like finding one of their two pieces in their deck seemed pretty unlikely across those turns before we'd win that game. But, I mean, they found it. We died. Happens. Um... I don't know. I mean, the white was strictly worse in this version because we never played against KCI or, like, even Harden Scales Affinity. So, like, we didn't really get to showcase the power of Stony Sounds versus not having Stony Sounds in our deck. Um, I don't know. That level was bad. That card was not good. I was not impressed. And, like, most of the rest of the base is the same base otherwise. So, like, trying to focus on how this deck felt different from the other decks... We did play against nearly as many creature decks, so we didn't get to, like, bring this in. Um, we didn't play against... Um, honestly, I think any 
really good matchups. Maybe Hollow One's good. But, like, we played against, like, Tron, Storm, and... What was our other loss? Oh, we played against Shadow. I guess we won against Shadow. So, yeah, we went one and three and played matches. Um, Shadow felt better, which is than I thought it would be, which is a relieving thing. Um, even though we, like, dumpstered them, their hands were non-functional. But I think that means that the matchup's probably closer to 50-50, and Ross seemed like he was a little worried about it. So, if... He was a little worried about it, and it doesn't seem like it seemed like it was probably close to 50-50, then I'm pretty comfortable with the matchup. But I think that I don't know. I think that Dunlop Roller was bad. I'm still not sure about these Swiss Spears, man. Like both the lists we played today had four Swiss Spears, and a lot of times it still just wasn't a quick enough clock. Like you it still felt like we needed to find our arc lights, or our deck just like didn't really function very well. So and in the first league, I think the list was just a little bit better tuned, even though, even though the mutagenics were awkward. That was probably just the, due to the fact that we had a, kind of a small sample size. So I'm thinking that overall with Arclight, I think this version is worse than the er, the version we played earlier as far as which one's tuned more. Um, I might be still willing to buy the, the other version with like you know, a mana base similar to this one, splashing white for Stony Silence of the Cyborg might be correct, but I think a lot of the decisions that were made with this deck list over Ross's deck list are incorrect. So that's kind of just where I'm at. Um, yeah, I mean, I think in the first league, Arclight, the deck felt very, very strong. I think that it felt very complicated, so I messed it up and we didn't do as well as we otherwise would have. I think in this league... Um, we played against some harder matchups and like the deck building mistakes made with this deck, I think kind of showed, I don't know how many monasteries to spears I would play this weekend. If I was playing this deck going into this, I would like, was so sure that four was correct. Cause like I wanted to make sure we had four against a lot of the matchups where like the combo matchups specifically things like storm and stuff like that. And I think in that league, I'd like played one on turn one. Right. And like, played the entire match and they like never even came really close to dying to it which is like pretty frustrating especially once you bring in like all these interactive spells like if your plan is to bring in interactive spells all of these cards get worse because interactive spells like these all incentivize you to play spells proactively with maybe the exception of this one where you can like kind of hold up the flip um this wants you to play spells in your turn this wants you to play spells in your turn even um Bedlam Reveler wants you to play spells on your turn because of prowess and like just emptying your hand and then playing him, right? So I think that maybe it's just that cards like these aren't very good in our deck because we want to play so many like spells proactively or like we, we need to be sideboarding differently to like mitigate the fact that we want to be playing spells proactively. And so maybe the, maybe there's like a little bit of a sideboard plan issue but overall i mean we didn't really get to see how much better having the anger was than not because we didn't we never really got to play any creature decks um having the three of braids is kind of nice but we didn't really see him surgical ended up not really being enough against storm although once again like i tanked on that surgical decision for a long time but i mean we had spell patient and surgical which was two cyborg cards and like still just kind of died so the matchup's definitely bad but I, I don't know if it's supposed to be that bad. I don't know. Uh, there's definitely a lot that could be done and changed on these deck lists. These are just ones that I took as like lists that I'm most likely to play this weekend if I'm playing this deck. And after those, I think I'm more likely to lean towards the way Ross's deck is configured. Um, with the mutagenics and the fourth thought scour and just like no white. But... I am also unsure that four Swiss Spears is correct. Like I don't, I don't know. I would have to look at what some of the other options are in the deck list. Like maybe if we can find more cantrips that like are easier to find, like the, the actual good cards in the deck, like Arclight Phoenix and stuff like that, or um, any of I don't know, just any better threat. Although there probably isn't one, or we'd be playing it. I, I wouldn't also mind like trying a JVP in this deck, but either way, like. I think that's going to do it for me. Thank you very much if you've been watching along on YouTube, even though this was probably a little bit rougher than normal. Like, normally I think I'm a little more competent with the decks I'm playing on stream. But, like, sometimes, I mean, I do play some pretty complicated decks that I've never even touched before on stream. So I hope you guys 
were able to still enjoy the content despite the fact it took a little bit longer and I maybe didn't play as well as I would have otherwise. Um, but I appreciate you supporting my content. Thank you very much if you made it this far. Uh, we are 100% on some... Are we 100% on some variant of this deck? Um, no. Uh, going into it, I was like probably... 80% on some variant of this deck. After these leagues, I'm probably like 75% on some variant of this deck. So there's a good chance I play this. Honestly, for me, it's between this and Spirits, I think. Some some iteration of Arclight, some iteration of Spirits. Um, I'm probably going to have to do a little bit more testing, unfortunately, but I don't have a ton of time before I have to leave. Um, I feel more comfortable playing Spirits by a lot, but I am of the impression that Arclight might be a little bit better deck. But... There's also a little bit of problems I have with these Arclight decks, like I've kind of outlined on stream. Like, legitimately, the way, like what I've done is kind of, uh, like, the way I am analyzing these decks for you guys on these videos is the way I analyze them to myself and justify my deck decisions to, like, my teammates. Like, if I say, I'm playing this deck, here's what I found about these other decks. Like, a lot of these conclusions I'm drawing are things I'm keeping in mind and then, like, going to change and, like, try to iterate on. And if I can't really get anywhere with it, like, I'm just going to, like kind of spew my findings and be like here's here's why i'm not playing this deck here's why i'm playing this deck and so like i hope that you guys have kind of been able to at least enjoy a little bit of that aspect um like legitimately i'm using these two leagues as actual testing for columbus and these are like two decks i was legitimately considering playing and i'm not sure i'll play either of them as is right now um i think no matter which variant i play i'd make some changes if i decide to play this deck but there's still a very good chance i play spirits as well um, so I hope that answers your question. Once again, like I said, if you if you made it this far, thank you very much. If you enjoying the content, um, or if you're just a subscriber in general, thank you very much for being a subscriber. But if you're new here, please jam that subscribe button. It's the easiest way to support me on YouTube. I'll let you know when I post new videos. Um, if you are here on Twitch, thank you much for joining me. I really appreciate it. If you have not yet followed, please jam that follow button. And it's the easiest way to support me on Twitch, and we'll let you know when I go live. Um, I stream every Wednesday at 6 p.m. Central Time. Sometimes I'll stream on some off days when I have some extra time, but with the Players' Championship, and like me trying to hit every single open this season, my streaming's probably gonna stay around one to two days a week, max two, generally one. Um, but all of the content obviously will be available on YouTube for all of you. Um, and yeah, just thank you very much for your support. I appreciate it.